Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Everybody in that hallway to be aware of it and get back. We need to pop this and see if we get any type of response from this guy to see if he's in here or if he's actually moved out somewhere else. Got the audience on the 32nd floor. SWAT has explosive breach. Everyone in the hallway needs to move back. All units move back. Breach, breach, breach. Okay, and the rest is history. Well, it's an unwritten history. Welcome to the Savage Nation, a day after the worst mass slaughter in American history. You know every detail there is to know. You've heard everything. You've read everything. You've discussed everything. Really? Are you sure? This makes sense to you? Well, if it makes sense to you, you're a very shallow individual. That's all I can say. Again, welcome to the program for this date. The date, of course, is now into October 2017. And we have a slaughter that uh, should have affected America the way 9-11 did. Of course, not in terms of numbers of killed, but in terms of the shock of what was done. One thing is is for sure is we don't know what really happened. One thing is for sure we don't know if he acted alone. One thing is for sure there are too many questions that remain unanswered. One thing is for sure though and that is that the government is already covering it up. They're covering it up. They know for sure it was not related to terrorism. Within an hour they knew it wasn't related to terrorism. After how long have they been investigating the Russia collusion and they haven't found any answers to that, but they're not sure about that one, but they're sure there's Russia collusion. But here within an hour, the government said there's no Russia, there's no collusion with anyone. We know it's not terrorism. We know it's not terrorism, yet the Las Vegas shooter wired $100,000 to the Philippines a week before he killed all these people. And where is Mary Lou Danley, the girlfriend? Why has she not been seized by U.S. Marshals, wherever she may be. How is it possible that she's allowed to act freely after a thing like this? Law enforcement officials on Monday morning said that Ms. Danley was not believed to be involved in the shooting at this time. Oh, really? How can you be sure of that? By the way, they found out that he was using her identification to gamble. There's something so wrong with this picture. Many people are asking the same questions I am asking, and I'm sure you have many questions. So let me throw out some questions on the show today. Who do you blame for all of this? Who do you blame for this slaughter? Should hotels in Vegas install metal detectors as you have at TSA checkpoints at airports? They should. It's now reached a point where we need a TSA-type inspection system at hotels, not only in Vegas, but maybe across America. I know you say, what, are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. Can you imagine if a a fellow from the Middle East, let's say, a member of ISIS, who was watching this says, wow, what a good idea this is. This is better than driving a car into a crowd. Hmm. And in America, I can buy machine guns now if I'm a citizen. What a great idea. I think I'll go buy some machine guns and tripods, flash suppressors, and I'll just rent a hotel room on a high floor and I'll start spraying anywhere in America. Allah, Allah, Allah. Isn't that wonderful? A new, a, new, a new battle plan for them. Why not metal detectors and TSA searches on the way in and out of hotels? I know it'll cost a lot of money. I know it's not good for business. But then again, we might stop the next slaughter. Who do you blame for this? Did he actually act alone? And I think most importantly, and on a, po- a positive level, Where do you find comfort in a time of evil? Don't tell me this didn't affect you last night, because I know it affected me. I have certain ways of dealing with stress. I turn to beauty. I overeat. I'm not joking. I'm telling you what I do. In a time of stress, I tend to eat more, and I tend to turn to pictures of beauty. I take pictures of beauty. I play with the dog and look at the beauty of the animal. 
But I'm asking you, did he act alone? Did he really act alone? Now, people on my Twitter feed are coming up with, I, some are very interesting comments. I said, did he act alone? One guy says, what I'm wondering is he did he act at all. Not that far-fetched that shooters hijacked his room, killed him, and made it look like suicide. I'm just going to read all the conspiracy feeds that I'm getting because you're not supposed to. We're not allowed to do that. Those of us in the major media are supposed to avoid that for fear of being called nuts. So let's just read all the nutty comments. Another one says, follow the money. Were his gambling debts paid off to get him into the room on a comp basis? And once he was in there, was he held against his will for three days and then real shooters came in and then he was shot? Another one says, why was his wife or girlfriend away? Where was she? Where was she? He's 64 years old. Maybe she radicalized him. He doesn't fit the mold at all. That's another one sitting out there. Another one says, so a 60-some-odd-year-old man walks into a firearms range with heavy weapons and no background on, ta on tactics. Uh-huh. Another one says, from the cadence of the fire, it sounded like well-trained support gunnery when the cops showed up, capped the old man and run into another room. Another one says, the girlfriend found a disturbed old white man, brainwashed him and got him to do this. Don't think she's innocent. Where is she now? So you see there is a lot of people out there who are not that crazy or asking questions that the police themselves are asking. I'll ask you. Again, who do you blame for all of this? Who do you blame for all of this? Please don't tell me what Jonas Schimmel said on television with the fake crybaby act that he pulls off every other night. Every other night, the comedian now who has no jokes, no humor, no sense of humor, every night he's playing politician and playing with tears. He blamed Republicans. He blamed conservatives. Of course, they blamed Donald Trump. So let's avoid politics. I'm asking you, who do you blame for this act? Who do you blame for this? Now, yesterday, on yesterday's show, the day of the shooting, I did a two-minute piece that many people heard, and they said, you have to play it again. I then did a one-minute piece that was quoted widely around America on me saying you could sneak an elephant into a busy Vegas hotel. In fact, I have a friend who was in Manhattan right now who said to me he was in a taxi cab yesterday in Manhattan, and when my show went on, he saw that the cab driver had it set to 770 on the dial. That's WABC. And he asked the man, do you know who's on? The man said, oh, I, I love Michael Savage. I listen to him every day. And he said, well, why do you listen to him? You're, you're from another country. He was apparently from the Caribbean. He said, because this guy makes sense. I listen to him religiously. And he loved that one on the elephant in the room. But there's something disturbing about another clip that I found, which came to us during the event from LVPD Radio, where they confirmed that there were two shooters at the time the SWAT team went in. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you want to sweep this under the rug. I know you want to move on, and I want you to, and you want to go back to business as usual. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're not going back to business as usual. So let me begin in a replay in clip three, which is the officer at the event, when they're going in to get the guy, listen very carefully when he says there are at least two shooters with a fully automatic, with fully automatic weapons. Two shooters, listen to this now on the Savage Nation. 182 SC, we might need to split these channels. We're going to need a dedicated one for this 32nd floor, I think. Uh, he shot down the hallway and hit a security guard. And we have a four-man team up here, and we have another element coming to us. So we'll, we're going to have about eight on the 32nd floor. We will need the 29th floor. It sounds like it's confirmed there are at least two shooters with fully automatic weapons. Control 715 Zebra. Get somebody to the camera room and see if we can get cameras watching that 29 and 32nd floor. All right. Now, another question is, why did it take the police 78 minutes to suppress the killer? That was an awfully long time. That's really crazy. Why did it take so long? What, what delayed the police? Does anyone have an answer to that question? Phone number is 855-407-282. This is the Savage Nation. Not ready to take a break. I'm ready to start the show with the same old questions that I started with. Who do you blame for this tragic slaughter? 
And on the other side of it, where do you find comfort in a time of evil? Me? I had Punjabi curry, a double order last night. I had a double Punjabi curry that comes without uh, coconut milk. It's the old way. It's made the way it's made in India before the Americans destroyed curry and had to sweeten it the way Chardonnay uh, was destroyed for people who grew up on Coca-Cola where they gave it a creamy taste. Where do you find comfort in a time of evil? I'm not going to turn it into a comedy show, but I'm going to turn it into a questioning show. Who did this? Did he really do it? And who's the woman? What do you mean they're waiting for her to come back? Excuse me, it's, uh, the biggest slaughter in U.S. history, she wasn't picked up by U.S. Marshals and brought here against her will? Why not? Can anyone explain why she hasn't been brought in for questioning? Does that make sense to you? Does the government not look like it's aiding and abetting in a cover-up? Yeah, something's wrong with the whole story. I don't have the answers or I wouldn't be asking the questions. But I invite you to call today in either event and tell us what you think really went on here and who you blame for this and whether you agree with me that hotels in Vegas and perhaps everywhere should now install metal detectors and a TSA-style frisk job on the way in and out. The man brought in 10 bags of guns and ammunition and no one noticed this? Excuse me, does that make sense to you? Not a maid, not a security agent in this hotel noticed a guy with 10 bags going into a hotel room? No one saw this? Does that make sense to you? Well, my friends, it's a new day in America and things have to change. And I hope you help us make the changes for the best. This is the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855 400 7282. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800 289 2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the most rational radio show in the history of America, where Aristotelian logic reigns. I can give you the phone number and ask the questions again, which I'm not going to do because you've already heard them. In a few minutes, I will tell you what we know about the Las Vegas shooter's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, from a, an interview that came out recently, actually just came out in the Reno Gazette Journal, you're not going to believe this. Did you know he was married before? Oh, you didn't know that. You didn't hear about that one. There's another little factoid for the listener. He'd been married for 25 years before jointly filing for divorce. Did you know about that one? Well, it's something there that has nothing to do with this, but you didn't know about that. And who's the girl here? The, uh, the girlfriend, Danley, the former croupier. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but I asked you a loaded question of who do you blame for this? Robert on KSFO has an answer. Go ahead, Robert. Fire away. Uh, two points. One, uh, who do I blame? I blame our healthcare system. I actually work in healthcare, and what I've seen over the past five to ten years is a steep decline in mental health and behavioral health facilities. Um, wait, this is a, hold it, sir. This is such a knee-jerk reaction. I, I appreciate that you're a good person and a kind, giving person. Do you actually believe that most people who need mental health care would? A, think that they need it, and number two, go and receive it? The answer is no to both questions. So the only people who would get mental health care who are, though, are, are those who either don't need it or those are forced to accept it. But a guy like this never would have said, I'm nuts, I'm going to go get mental health care. So how would that have helped? How, how would that have helped? How would more health, mental health care have, help, have helped stop this? Well, I do agree with your point in terms of those that, want help will seek it on their own. Um, generally speaking, however, um, I'm not blaming this case on the lack of mental health care, but I think in general... That well, I'll tell you who needs mental health services right now. It's the victims of the shooting, who, those who survived. Agreed. That's where, that's where psychologists and trained professionals from around America should be going to offer their services for free. I cannot imagine 
what it would be like, and I pray to God I never have to imagine, being at an event like that and having a loved one butchered in front of my eyes, I wouldn't know how to go on with life after that, would you? Now, I don't know that a shrink is going to help me, uh, would help me do that. What are they going to do? The balloons now and the clowns are going to come out? You know, this country is in a state of total meltdown. We're in a state of moral, mental, and physical decline. You can blame anyone you want. I'm not here to blame liberals. I'm not going to blame the media. You can blame anybody you want. They can blame us. We can blame them. What is that going to do for us? Nothing. Let's stick to the facts. He wired $100,000 to the Philippines last week, which means that the maniac was planning the slaughter, correct? Let's be clear. Who got the money? The officials who know that he wired hundred grand to the Philippines last week to an account in his live-in girlfriend's home country in the Philippines? Did you know he gambled under her name? That makes, And yet the police said she had nothing to do with it. Look at this. This just came out. I see it in the Business Insider. What we know about the Las Vegas shooter's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley. Already they know she has nothing to do with it. More details have emerged about Mary Lou Danley, the girlfriend of the man who opened fire on concert girls at Las Vegas Lance on there. Authorities said the gunman, Stephen Paddock, used identification of Danley's at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, prompting authorities to track her down. But as of Monday night, the innocent girl, Danley, was no longer being sought out as a person of interest because they said she was in the Philippines at the time of the shooting. Shooting. So, what does that mean? What do you mean she was in the Philippines? So what does that mean? mean she's free now? How do you know she had nothing to do with this? An unidentified acquaintance of Danley who was contacted by the Reno Gazette Journal said this, quote, she had nothing to do with this psycho. This poor lady, she was in the Philippines visiting family. Okay, how do we know she had nothing to do with this? She was his girlfriend. He used her ID. He sent her $100,000, so already she's free and clear? Danley is a citizen of Australia and still has family there. Danley calls herself a proud mom and grandma. Oh, here we go. And who lives life to the fullest on a Facebook page. Don't you just love it? It's a Pulitzer right in that. I'm sorry, I would start with her? I wouldn't already say she had nothing to do with it? Automatically, nothing? I'm afraid there's a cover-up in the works here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. symphony for a reason when george gershwin the great american composer went to paris in the 1920s i believe he was impressed with the cacophony of the taxi horns in paris and most people would have found them to be disturbing in other words the cacophony of the horns would have disturbed most people but being the genius that he was the musical genius that he was he heard music in the cacophony and he turned it into a great symphony I'm trying to tell you that the cacophony of America right now can drive a person insane. And you have to find a way to find beauty in the madness. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what you have to do. You have to learn to surf the madness of America right now. Now, there is a Philippines connection to uh, ISIS that should not be overlooked, and I have to talk about it for a few minutes. She's from the Philippines. She has nothing to do with it, according to Las Vegas police, which I don't believe. He wires 100 grand to her. She's conveniently there, and we're supposed to believe she has nothing to do with it. Well, let me put a little piece of evidence out for all of you intelligent listeners to put together, which you probably already have done. September 12, 2017, ISIS recruits fighters for the Philippines instead of Syria. This is from September, last month. A video released by ISIS asks would-be fighters to go to the Philippines instead of Syria and Iraq. 
the latest sign that the terror group is shifting its recruiting tactics as it loses ground to coalition forces in the Middle East. The seven-minute English-language video released by official ISIS media operations last month includes messages from several fighters in the southern Philippines and scenes from battles with government troops near the city of Marawi, including the pillaging of a Catholic church. You didn't hear anything about that on ABC News. One of the fighters calls on Muslims, quote, in East Asia, specifically those in Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, Thailand, and Singapore, to migrate and fight alongside the ISIS-linked militants in the Philippines. A militant identified as Abul Yaman from Marawi proclaims, come forth to the land of Jihad, perform Hijra, come forth to Marawi. Okay, so we see there's a connection to the Philippines. This is not new, by the way. It's not new to me. I don't know if it's new to you, but this particular video is interesting in terms of the slaughter. I remember back in the 60s when I was first in the late 60s, excuse me, early 70s, I was doing my ethnobotanical research in remote parts of the Pacific. And I had a professor who did all of his work in the Philippines, and he told me that the Muslims in the southern islands of the Philippines were violent thieves at that time. They were pirates. And he was a researcher. He said he's been stopped before and robbed before by them, as he did his botanical research. And he advised me that if you go there, I said, well, what do you do if they stop your canoe? on an out island. He said, just give them everything that they want. They won't kill you. That was then. That was then. Not today. Savage audio. More questions than answers. The Philippine connection should not be dismissed. I believe that Danley is a very powerful, powerful link to this problem. Something's wrong. Police combing the hotel room of Paddock that he used for his deadly rampage, found Danley's slot machine card. Paddock was also carrying some of Danley's identification. Those items led police initially to declare her a person of interest and launch a search, but detectives later made contact with her and said they do not believe she's involved with the shooting on the strip. Now, maybe they're doing that as a ploy to let her think she's free. I've seen this before. And then they're actually tracking her in the Philippines which is a dictatorship right now under Duterte. So something's wrong with the whole picture. Why would they immediately say she's not a subject of interest? Maybe to see, she figures, oh, wow, I'm off, you know, I'm off the hook. And they'll see her go to her contacts. We don't know anything more about this. But uh, they found Danley's slot machine card and that he was carrying some of her ID. And now the prime minister of Australia saying she's not a person of interest anymore. Why? How could they be so quick to dismiss her as a person of interest unless the whole thing is a ploy to let her think she's off the hook so they will follow her now? Who knows? No, no. There's so much more to this story, and it's you don't have to say, oh, it's all conspiracy. Let's move on. There's nothing to see here. I don't believe that at all, something of this magnitude. Something's very wrong with the picture. Now, what I'm calling for, if you want me to be proactive, I've already done it, is I want metal detectors and a TSA form of screening in every hotel in America, every hotel, with every high-rise hotel. That's all. Simple. It'll cost billions of dollars. By the way, you know, speak about the cost of these things. I don't know a more unlucky president in American history than Donald Trump. Not only has he been hit with a false, identific- a false investigation by the evil socialist communist Democrats that goes on and on and on at a limited cost. Where, where is Mueller getting all of this money from to hire 16 prosecutors at enormous expense, and literally rifle through everybody's background, even on issues that have nothing to do with the, quote, Russia investigation. Mueller is acting like a criminal right now, and I think Trump should fire him. I'm going to do that on another show. Trump has every right to fire Mueller, and it doesn't matter what the fallout might be. The liberals hate him anyway. The liberal media hates him anyway. The liberal media will hate him no matter what comes out. And so it's time for Trump to throw Mueller out He is acting like a gangster, not like a prosecutor. That's right. You heard me. Mueller is a gangster, not a prosecutor. You know, when a prosecutor exceeds his authority, he becomes a criminal. And right now he's acting like a criminal. As far as I'm concerned, I think Mueller should be indicted. But having said that, I've never seen a more unlucky president in my life. He got hit with the hurricanes in Florida, then the hurricanes in uh, in Texas, then a hurricane in Florida, 
Then now the Puerto Rico flooding. Now the worst shooting in American history, which is going to devastate the economy of Nevada. And God knows what collateral industries are going to be affected by this. How can this country ever recover economically after a thing like this? And by the way, Trump is, Trump is starting to show the wear and tear only 10 months into the presidency. He looks like he's been in it for four years. I mean, it, it, it wears them all out. They all turn gray rapidly. But this, I mean, this is wearing this guy out. I don't know how he's going to handle this one. But getting back to the crime that just occurred, the slaughter is the issue. I want to go back to something I did yesterday about the lack of security in the, in the hotels. I'd like to play clip number two from the October 2nd version of the Savage Nation. Well, my friends, there are more questions than answers, more than 50 dead. And the uh, issue of the automatic weapon, the semi-automatic no, weapon. the wrong one, Robert. Pay the right. attention. Stop. I said clip number two, not clip one, number one. Oh, that is two? It says there are more questions than answers. It sounds like one. No, let's argue on the air. Let, let me have an argument with my board operator. Situation, I need them. I'm going to get an argument every time I ask for a soundbite now. KSFO 1, line 3, go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I do believe this was a radicalization of this old guy. What makes you believe he was radicalized and by whom? Well, I do believe that that ISIS was in charge of this. I have a lot of friends that serve in Afghanistan. And one of the things that they would always talk about would be was these pedestals. They would build these pedestals, and they would always have cameras set up. These pedestals are for high ranges and narrow streets, so they could literally stand up on these pedestals. No, wait, what do you mean a pedestal? In the hotel room? Yeah. What do you need a pedestal for? He was on the 23rd floor or whatever. What do you need a pedestal it, for? It gives him a better angle from down, straight down. If you're no, no he, didn't need, he didn't need a pedestal for the angle. He already had the angle from the height of the building. But So I would rule out the pedestal. No, where'd you see a pedestal in the pictures? That, that number one. But the, why did he have a camera on the door? How did he know to have a camera on the door to alert him as to when the, t the SWAT team was coming? Where'd that come from? Just an ordinary guy. How did he know all of these things? This is typical training of ISIS. Okay. This is what I, accept that, I accept that some of it matches ISIS shooters and ISIS shooting techniques, but let's say that he didn't do the shooting. Let's take the wildest conspiracy theory that, uh, uh, well, you're not saying he didn't do it. You're saying he was brainwashed and the Philippine girlfriend had something to do with it. Is that what you're saying? I'm thinking that there is a possibility this man was radicalized. He had a short-term training on how to put this all together. He had the funds to do it. And I believe that the FBI is either waiting for the cell and gather more evidence to discover the cell that's in Las Vegas. Or well, that could explain why they've dismissed the girlfriend as a suspect. They want her to think she's free, and they want to follow her motions in the Philippines, see where she goes. Because obviously she's going to be contacted or contact those she was involved with if she's in fact involved. And we don't know if she is. She could be purely innocent. And he could be a lone nut. I mean, let's not rule out that he could just be a nut who went crazy. Yeah, I believe they already know that she knows too much. So they're staying well, if, she, if she's found dead in the next 24 or 48 hours, we'll know that you're right. We'll see. And I can tell you that gun was an AK-47. I can promise you that. I've heard it too many times. Well, we've seen pictures. I, I respect that. But the pictures of his guns have been released. They're all over the Internet. I put them up on michaelsavage.com. Uh, it, it's lethal. You know, I was going to do gun control today, but I feel like, I didn't feel like committing su uh, career suicide yet. I can save career suicide for another day. I mean, I'm sorry. I thought of gun control the first day it happened, and I'm thinking about it again today. So I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to ask a question or two. Okay, I'm a gun owner. I'm a certified kosher gun owner. I pass all of the, all the tests. I gave money to the NRA many years ago, and I'm not a fan of Wayne LaPierre, by the way. To me, he's just a politician like the rest of them. But l let's put that aside. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute. The right to bear arms. Does that include bazookas, hand grenades, uh, a used Russian tank, 
a half track. Well, what do you mean the right to bear arms? How far does it go? You should be able to own 200 machine guns? Should there be a limit on the right to bear arms or what? Every man should be able to have an arsenal in his basement? I don't know. Just ask the question. I realize it's an it's a, it's a kind of an uncomfortable question coming from me. You'd expect that from uh, the, the, the liberals, but you mean I'm not allowed to even ask the question? What do you mean the Second Amendment permits you to have any number of machine guns? Does that make sense to you? I could see you having weapons to defend yourself. But what, an entire arsenal? 10,000 rounds of ammunition, bayonets, hand grenades, a rocket launch. Why not get an RPG? Maybe the Second Amendment isn't broad enough. Maybe that's the thing, is maybe uh, it doesn't go far enough. We should not only be allowed to have machine guns, tripods, silencers, trigger uh, mechanisms. I think it should be expanded to allow us to buy rocket-propelled grenades. And for that evil government that may arise any moment now, I think we should be able to buy flamethrowers. Every American, every red-blooded white male should be able to buy a flamethrower. That's what I think. Now, what, what good is home protection, like a shotgun and a handgun, without a good, good old flamethrower? I think we need to think about expanding the Second Amendment to include flamethrowers. That's all. Simple. Okay, we'll take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Those of you who are looking to do better in life, here's some solid career advice. Listen to me. Dress for the job that you want, not the job you have. Whether you're dressing for work or dressing to go out, people will notice the clothes you wear. It's why I wear Charles Turret shirts. We all love quality clothes, but until now, your options were brutal. It was either high-quality, ridiculously overpriced shirts or affordable, out-of-style shirts that wrinkle right away right? CT shirts are the best shirts in my closet. They're great. They're British styled using the softest fabrics. They're the most exquisitely crafted crease free shirts I've ever worn. Tie or no tie, tucked or untucked, you'll get compliments in a CT shirt. Now look, I got you a great deal. One CT shirt normally costs $100, but right now you'll get three shirts for just $99. That's 60% off and CT shirts come with free delivery, a six month quality guarantee and free returns. It's real easy. 99 bucks for three amazing CT shirts, but you need to hurry. Go to ctshirts.com slash savage. ctshirts.com slash savage. Again, that's ctshirts.com slash savage. I want to play for you a statement that I made yesterday that ties right into today on the lax security in Las Vegas hotels in particular, but all hotels in particular. Listen to O2 from yesterday. From the point of view of the firepower the fact that he was able to get away with it, the fact that no one noticed him bringing the guns in, the ammunition in. All right, I hear that. It's a busy hotel. You can bring anything in. You could walk an elephant into the room. There's very lax security in these hotels. They can't screen everyone going in, or can they? Is that what's going to come next? Uh, metal detectors now on the way in and out of Las Vegas hotels? Maybe. Something's wrong with the picture. More questions than answers. What questions are bothering you about the Vegas slaughter? Savage. Okay, MGM is the libel one. I, this is going to do a little damage to that business. Boy, oh boy. Uh, you talk about lack security. Something is so wrong. Now, the security and SWAT team that went in place there once the shooting started, they had to go floor to floor on the higher floors. But he broke the glass, we are told, with a hammer that was conveniently placed there for all the world to see after the event. I don't believe those windows were broken by a hammer. First of all, the, the windows were broken out from the top to the bottom in two, in two distinct areas of that, lo that large suite. I believe those windows were shot out. I don't believe they're broken out. It seems like it was a staged event after the event. Sorry. You're telling me there's no alarm in those windows? You're telling me that in a hotel of that size, there are no alarms that go off if windows are broken? Do you believe that's true? 
something is wrong with this whole story. We're not getting the answers. He sent $100,000 to the girlfriend's home account in the Philippines. The Philippines are a hotbed of radical Islam. ISIS is recruiting in the Philippines, actively recruiting in the Philippines. Why should she be dismissed as a person of interest unless she's really not been dismissed and she's just being followed? I don't know the answers. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. crazy time and it's especially hard on those in law enforcement it's very hard on those of us in the media who are trying to make sense out of this insanity it just came out in the last 30 minutes that this maniac this gunman who killed 59 and hurt 527 filmed himself while he was conducting the slaughter there is a film of him shooting at them did you know that he set up a camera in his room to film the mass murder. He set up other cameras in the hallway to capture police arriving. This puts aside most of the conspiracy theories. This is the end of that questioning. It still doesn't rule out the possibility that he was radicalized, but I would, I would dismiss that. The whole ISIS connection is now dismissed. There's no prayer rug. Uh, there's no holy book. There's no Allah job here. I'm sorry. This is just on a white male nut. Shortly after 10 p.m. local time, Stephen Paddock smashes the windows in his room and opens fire with an assault rifle, and he's filming himself while doing it. Okay, that's the end of that discussion. Over. Gone. And by the way, the police only found him because apparently he set off a, he set off a smoke alarm in the room from all the shooting. He had how many guns? He killed all these people. He had 23 rifles in 10 bags, which he brought into the Mandalay Bay. He legally converted into full auto assault rifles on tripods, and the security in the Mandalay Bay didn't notice any of this. A maid didn't see it. Hi, sir, how are you today? As she trips over a, a tripod. No one saw this, nothing. Uh, just another guest. They didn't even mention it. Nothing. He had guns all over the room and they didn't see anything. No one saw anything. This is, the whole thing's insanity. Sniper nest. Other semi-auto weapons have been modified with legal bump stocks. Why, why do you need a bump stock? Can anyone listening to the show tell me that the Second Amendment says you should have the right to get a bump stock now? As I say, where does this end? How far do you want to expand the Second Amendment? Flamethrowers, I think. I think every red-blooded American male should have a flamethrower. You must have a flamethrower in your arsenal. 23 weapons wouldn't be enough. You need a flamethrower. And while you're at it, have the NRA uh, expand the Second Amendment to give you permission to buy a half-track and, and an operational tank. I don't mean a fully automatic tank. I mean a semi-automatic tank that can easily be converted to an automatic tank because you may need that when the government comes to get you. 42 firearms? I I don't know, something's wrong here. Something's got to change in this mad country of ours. This is crazy now. This is just nuts. I, all the mental health helpers in the world wouldn't have stopped this. 
He made a fortune in real estate? And he was a degenerate gambler on top of it all? And no one knows anything about him. Four DDM4 rifles made by Daniel Defense. Uh, FN-15 rifles. Guns by Sig Sauer. AK-47. Colt AR-15. Wonderful weapon. Wonderful weapon. Wonderful weapon. I guess they should outlaw hammers now. I think assault hammer should be banned. Look, we're trying to sort through this. Most of us can't comprehend doing this or knowing anyone who could do this. And we want to blame ISIS for it. Emotionally, we want to blame ISIS, right? Make us feel better. Aha, okay, that explains it. He was radicalized. Well, no, he wasn't. That's over. Sorry, over. He was a, a plain, homegrown nut in plain English. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. So now we go to where do you find comfort in a time of evil? Evil. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that anymore. The Bible? Maybe. The only way I can sort through that from the point of view of religion and God, you know, I do have the big God book coming out in November. I mean, it's the pregnant elephant in the room. I haven't yet talked about God once in all of this. Because you could ask, where is he? Oh, you believe in God? Where was he when his innocent girls were being shot? Well, I have an answer to that in the book, which I learned many years ago which is that God is omnipresent, but God is not omnipotent. Meaning if God controlled every act on earth, I would stop believing in God the second I thought that was true. You see a cancer ward with children in it, that's the end of your belief in God. I don't want to believe that it's past life punishment. Please don't call me on this. God does not control everything that happens on the earth. He set the whole clock in motion. The rest is up to chance and up to us. Now, can he intervene now and again? I don't know. Who knows? Get out the prayer beads and the crosses and the stars and the Torahs. Get the statues out. Get the beads. Get, get the golden calves. I don't know, man. I don't have an answer to that question. That's why I'm a searcher. That's why I'm a searcher. I still think that we can be pragmatic about this. Things can change in the country. One is I want TSA screening into hotels. Uh, any high-rise hotel, for that matter, any hotel, why not you have TSA screening? What you, what are you going to find? Oh, we can't have screening in Las Vegas hotels because people bring in weird things into their rooms. Should I spell them out for you? That they were, they, they, what, the weirdos won't show up with their devices? The sexual devices won't arrive in the rooms for the acts that are planned by the owners of the hotels to keep the whales happy? No, no, I want TSA screening in every hotel in Vegas and everywhere else for that matter. How do you know a nut can't do this anywhere else? Chicago, New York, San Francisco, a high rise. The next nut now learns something new. Go to a high floor, come with a hammer and automatic weapon and have some fun and film yourself doing it and put it on YouTube. You'll have your moment of glory. You'll have your 15 minutes of fame. It's, the whole country's insane. Was he on medication? Because if he was, that would be partial, a partial explanation. I have railed for years against uh, S, the the SSRIs, the selective serotonin reup selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. It's a long series of words. Yes, I know how they operate. I know the mechanism, and I think that they're the most deadly of all drugs, far more deadly than you can imagine. People on medication are liable to go off any moment and kill someone or kill themselves. The high rate of suicide in this country related to SSRIs. The high rate of slaughter amongst these mass murderers, almost all of them were on SSRIs. Was this one on it? We don't know. You think the autopsy is going to produce that result? It could. Will we get the answer? No, because the, the, the pharmaceutical industry always blocks the release of that information. They do not want the average person out there who's on antidepressants to know that the drugs they're taking could turn them into a mass murderer or a suicide case. I don't know. This is terrible. This is so awful. Millionaire Vegas gunman who killed 59 and hurt 55. Took 23 guns and 10 bags into the hotel in the Mandalay Bay. Blah, blah, blah. Please. The maids didn't notice? Excuse me, sir. I didn't mean to step on the tripod. Then they didn't talk amongst themselves about the guns and the tripods all over the room? All right. He didn't have them out till that day. And then he said, no, no service. Privacy wanted. Let's take some calls. I'm exhausted from this. KBET in Las Vegas. Enrique, you're in Las Vegas. You're a cab driver. Tell us what you got on your mind. I say yes on the sneaking the elephant into the Vegas hotels and yes on the TSA type security system, and I'll tell you why. I drive a taxi, 
in Vegas. I'm on the job right now. Um, we got we got people with golf club bags, golf shows we have here. We got musicians, gear, we heavy bags all day long, and it's hundreds of bags of luggage we carry in every day. So I so you as a cabbie who makes his living in Vegas, you agree with me that we need TSA security in the lobby of every one of these hotels. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree, because I tell you what, those bags I lift into my cab and not, and these floor guys and these bow hops, they have no idea what's in these bags. No, they have no idea. And they're heavy bags. We carry heavy bags all day. And it's, it's, I wonder sometimes what's in these bags. All right, you're breaking up, but I, I, this is amazing from the grounds there in, the, in Las Vegas. I used to own an apartment there for, across from the, I forget what it was, the Hilton. I'm one of those people who don't gamble. I haven't gambled since I got over the habit when I was 12. I gambled between the ages of 11 and 12, which is a normal time in a man's life. Uh, and, and you outgrow it in one year. If you don't outgrow it, you're sick. If you have a gambling habit after the age of 12. It goes along with other forms of adolescent behavior, which will not be mentioned on the show because it is a family show. But I got over gambling at 12. I got so heavily into it. I bought a roulette wheel. I bought a, a little mini plastic roulette wheel. I remember to this day in a toy store, and a, a, a green thing, like a thing with the hole, with the gambling, with the quarters and and chips. And I set up gambling a gambling den in my basement, you know, for five and ten. So I really did. I made money off the. It was a, it was fun. I became. I was smart enough to know that you could make money at a thing like that. I was like a young Steve Wynn. Had I only followed that dream, no, but I didn't. I I was more idealistic than that. No, I set up a whole, like, green, you know, with the, the roulette, the roulette thing, like you bet on chip. And all the kids in the neighborhood, all my friends, they come up with nickels, dimes. And I outgrew it in a year. I don't know even why I stopped. I should have continued that. What I waste my time with master's degrees and a Ph.D. in ethnobotany and books? I should have stuck with the, uh, with, the, with the roulette wheel. No, I'm just joking. This is my fate to be here. What, I'm just a retired old man now? Another one of them walking around aimlessly like a fly sprayed with raid? The country's filled with old guys wandering around, but they don't know what to do with themselves. They have no reason to get up in the morning. I could retire. I could have retired years ago. I don't want to retire. You see the men walking around? They don't know what to do with themselves. Gol How much can you play golf? That, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm just freaking out over this whole thing. Now that we know he did it, he, would, he acted alone, and there's no ISIS connection. Oh, okay, you're going to hold out that he was an ISIS member. Why would you still hold on to that conspiracy theory? Kim and KBET, on, okay, you still believe that he was connected to ISIS. Why? I have heard in the past that um, they like to video live killings so that they can use it for propaganda films in the future. I, I don't necessarily believe that. It's just I believe that it could be a possibility of, you know. I, okay, I, but here's the problem. Possible. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Shortly after 10, he starts breaking the windows with the hammer, and he does his horrible thing. But he, he sets a video camera running on himself, and it does. so far as we know, the tape does not proceed with him wearing a headscarf and saying, I'm Abu Stephen Paddock, and I'm about to kill a lot of infidels because they love America and they listen to country music, and I'm Abu Stephen Paddock, and what you're watching is going to happen to you. I don't see any of that. I don't see it either. I haven't seen any TV because I've been working at the Mandalay Bay no. night for the. Are, are you at Are you at the Mandalay Bay right now in Vegas, Kim? What's I've Are you in the hotel? Are you in the hotel, Kim? Are you in the hotel right now? No, I just left. What is the state of things in the Mandalay Bay, Kim? If you work there, it, I want to know what What's the staff saying? What are they doing? What's it like there? Would you hold on? Is there anyone else listening to the show on KBET in Las Vegas? who works in that hotel, who is a service employee of that hotel, who could tell us what you are thinking today, right now, tell the nation, tell the world what the heck you're thinking and how did he get away with all those bags, all those guns, and not one person saw it. I'd love to hear that when I come back on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. <laughs> Be blessed.
blessed with this radio show. It was God's will that I landed here for these times, both for me and my audience. You just take it for what it is. That's my viewpoint. I don't need you to agree with me. But I'm also blessed with the fact that I have a great affiliate in Las Vegas. And right now, John is a bellman, who was a bellman at Mandalay Bay, is calling this program to tell us certain things. Remember what I called for. I called for metal detectors and TSA level screening at hotels, not only in Las Vegas, but perhaps throughout America. John on KBET Radio in Las Vegas, line two. Go ahead, please. You're a bellman at Mandalay Bay. I just want to confirm that. Yes, I am. Kate, what do you have to tell us today that's of any significance? Please go ahead. Well, here's the thing. I mean, when guests come into the hotel and they check their luggage, I mean, they can check anything in there. We're not permitted to look into the luggage. We're not permitted to ask what they're bringing. Um, they give us so wait, so even if you're suspicious, you're not allowed to even ask? Um, well, if, if we're suspicious, yes. There have been cases, I mean, in the past where people have been suspicious and will say something, but if it's just luggage and we have no idea um, what's in the bag, we're not allowed to ask, we're not allowed to look in the luggage, we just do what we're told. In that hotel, the Mandalay Bay, where this occurred, how could he have set up all of these guns and, and such and not be heard or noticed by any of the service staff? Okay, if you put a do not disturb sign on your door, you're not allowed to enter. Um, you don't, you don't... Uh, that, I, that I understand. So w you think he set up all these guns that day then? Um, from what I understand, uh, you know, he was... He was coming in and out of the hotel. He was there for a couple of days. I mean, he, he could have brought everything up in waves. Um, he, he didn't have what, to what's the word amongst the workers in that hotel today? What are they whispering and saying to each other, John, about anything? What's come up that you think is worth talking about on this national show? What are they saying? The only thing we're, we're talking about mainly is the experiences of the guests that were actually there and experiences of the guests that actually lost somebody. We're dealing with this. We're hearing the stories, and it's, uh, it's, it's somber. It's, it's painful. Have a lot of people checked out of the hotel after this event who was supposed to be there? Did they just leave? Uh, well, it depends. Um, if you left... Wait, I, am I to believe that the day after this, they're sitting around the pool drinking uh, uh, alcoholic beverages and gambling like usual? I'll bet, I'll bet they are. No, no, no. The, the, the hotel, the, the casino floor is pretty empty right now. Oh. Um, people are leaving. One, one side of the hotel is completely shut down. Everybody is leaving through the, the other side of the hotel, which is an all-suite tower called the Delano. Everybody's leaving through that that tower. Um, you know, if people had their cars in Valet, Valet was completely shut down until uh, this morning. So mm. we're at All right, it's, it's a chaotic scene. Would metal detectors help? is the question. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. that the Las Vegas police, DHS, FBI, need to release the self-made video of the shooter immediately. And I think America deserves to see the footage to put aside certain questions. And if they don't, they're committing a great atrocity against the psychology of this nation. I can guarantee you that. They must release the footage, however disturbing it may be, to put aside some of the conspiracy theories that are circulating in this nation. Stephen Paddock, smashes the window, starts firing with one of his machine guns, killing all these people, injuring so many, and allegedly he made a video of it. I want to know why the FBI refuses to release that video. The American people need to have certain answers, and they need to know that certain conspiracy theories that are widely circulating are false. And they're committing a, an atrocity against the psychology of America. And I'll repeat that. I am so sick and tired of leaving these things to, quote, officials. Who the hell are they? What are they, God Almighty? These officials, they know more than you do? They have a different heart, a different soul, a different mind? 
They're just men, and many of them are stupid. All they have is unlimited power. Look at what Mueller is doing with his power, the abuse of power, Mr. FBI. Mr. Fearless Fosdick there committing a crime in this endless investigation against Donald Trump. It's a persecution out of the Stasi in East Germany. That's what Mueller is doing. So the same mindset is now holding back the video. I say that metal detectors would be a rational answer to some of these future problems. Total TSA screening, no matter how complex it is. Why is that so hard? They do it at stadiums. You go to a ball game. I went to a fight once at the MGM Grand. I had to go through metal detectors. It was like a zoo. You think I liked it? I didn't, but I had to go through it. Why did they have metal detectors at a fight and not a metal detector when you check in? Can you explain that to me? WABC Frank, line nine from New York City. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Mike, when you're a high, I'm, I'm a mid-level gambler. I get comps in Atlantic City and sometimes in Vegas. And when when you gamble the way this guy gambles, you get treated first class, like a, like a, like a different, different person. You can walk in that hotel with anything you want. Peacocks, animals, anything you want. No one's going to stop you. No one's going to say anything. So that's what you don't you understand. That if you're a high-level gamble with, with, with comp suites, every, everything's catered for you. You have your own maitre d', you have everything, your own waitress, everything. All right, so he, he, was, he was known as a whale. I get it. So a whale can bring machine guns in and no one will even say anything. No one stops you. If, you, if you're staying in a suite, you could bring any, any female companion, any person of interest upstairs with you. If you stay in a regular room, they, they, the, the, mate, the security comes right up to you. Who's All right, okay, you're saying something that's intriguing, n not unexpected, but you say they can bring anything in. I don't believe that. You're telling me if a guy brought in an underage person, it wouldn't be he wouldn't be stopped. Mike, I, 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 I stayed in tweets before, and I brought friends up, and I brought female companions, and I stayed in regular rooms where I didn't get caught. It's two different worlds. Two different words. How, how could he bring 10 bags in with machine guns and not be noticed? I don't know about that, but I know when you're dropping ten to $20,000 in, in a, in a three- or four-day vacation, they don't care what you do. No, no, I understand yeah. the, the financial dynamics of, of a gambling ca casino. I get it. But first of all, they have, um, they have hotel security cameras running 24-7, right? Yeah. Okay. So that whoever's monitoring those cameras should have noticed a guy coming in with big bags, even over a three-day period, up and down, up and down, up and down. Shouldn't they have noticed that? Yeah, but like if they know who the guy is, they get they get treated different. Oh. All right, so this is this is a breakdown of security, a total breakdown of security by the hotel. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. I mean, even if you have, let's say, caught blush to do what you want, certain behavior should trigger some response. Oh, well. All right. Well, thanks for helping us go through this. I hit the wrong button here. Guys, help me with the telos if you can get into it remotely. I'm so angry right now at everything. Runtime error, subscription out of range. I hit the wrong button on the Assist Pro. I can't even take calls. Maybe they can clean it up for me. Look, this is not an easy thing to talk about. You can't turn it into humor. You can't comfort people about this with some homily garbage like Norman Vincent Peale. Whoever he is, I think he's in heaven. What you could do is go through it and ask common sense questions here. The whole thing first didn't make sense to me of how he can get away with it. Vegas madman filmed himself during slaughter. Okay, I put that up as my headline on michaelsavage.com. Then the next thing is Savage Audio, more questions than answers. I put that up. Then I got stories of heroism from Las Vegas. That can break your heart altogether. Here's one that bothers me. Vegas shooter had bump stocks to convert rifles to full auto. Sorry. I don't care if they're legal or not. I want them outlawed. What the hell do you need a bump stock for? What do you mean you need a bump stock to make it make a machine gun? No, I know. Now I'm a liberal communist socialist from hell. I get it. No, I want bump stocks eliminated. What's this thing with, with uh, silencers now illegal? I, I, can you believe that you can buy a, a suppressor for a machine gun? What the hell for? How could that be part of the Second Amendment? Even following the logic of the whole thing that you're going to hold off an army in your house like uh, John Wayne, 
Let's assume that's what you're living in, in that scenario. The government's coming to get you, and you need 35 machine guns and 12,000 rounds of ammunition, even if you have children running around tripping on the bullets. Okay, let's say that's your mindset. Then what do you need a suppressor for? If you're in that scenario, you don't need a suppressor, then do you? The only reason you need a suppressor is to be an assassin and kill somebody. So what in the world? How can you argue for that? ISIS releases new video breaking that Las Vegas shooting is revenge for U.S. attacks. That's probably nonsense. Las Vegas shooter wired 100 grand to Philippines last week. That I talked about already. Video shows Vegas shooting suspect at Cosmopolitan Las Vegas Hotel in 2011. If you haven't seen that one, I linked it on, on michaelsavage.com because I, you have to see this guy doing a slip and fall. New York is filled with slip and fall artists. It's one of the uh, first roads to wealth in America when you get off the boat is the slip and fall uh, act. And most uh, immigrant groups have shyster lawyers amongst them who do slip and fall, uh, exclusively slip and fall acts. So if you look at the vid- Vegas uh, suspect, it's hard, I mean, it's hard to believe you can look at this. He sued the hotel in 2011 and was dismissed in 2014. Video shows Vegas shooting suspect at Cosmopolitan Las Vegas. New York right now must have, what, 10,000 slip and fall lawyers? It's the, uh, it's, the entry level, uh, it's, the, it's the entry level to the American dream. You go in a supermarket, you have a little liquid in the pocket, you give a little spritz on the foot, on the shoe, and you do a slip job, and you scream out, oh, and then you hurt your hamstring. Then you have the immigrant lawyer lined up. You have the immigrant doctor lined up. Uh, you have the uh, established uh, connections all lined up, and then you, you pocket a few grand. They send you to a chiropractor in Jackson Heights or uh, a podiatrist who puts you in a weird machine that no one knows what it does. You build up the medical bill. You got to make the bill big enough so that they give you six times the medical bill. So they get, send you to fake doctors. There he is. He, he engaged in this like, oh, I slipped. So this guy was already a, a, a con man. Two Nevada gun shops say Stephen Paddock passed all background checks. Shows you what good they are. <laughs> you know, I have not yet talked about what the Spanish fascists are doing to those who want separation in the Catalonia area. What a story that is. I was going to do it yesterday, along with the PBS propaganda film uh, smearing all of our troops in Vietnam and making the North Vietnamese into, into saints. I haven't yet gotten to the PBS. Trump should immediately defund PBS, but that's, I wasn't, I don't have time for that. I really have to talk about what the Spanish fascists are doing to those who want to separate from Spain because what they are doing is exactly what the fascists did to uh, uh, minority groups that wanted separation from fascism in Spain in the 1930s. And what's odd here is that the very same liberals in the media who are against fascism, are silent on the uh, socialist monsters, the fascist socialists, because they're one and the same. I know you're supposed to think they're separate, but they're not. Hitler was a national socialist, so he was a fascist and a socialist. It's not impossible to understand that. In fact, if you look at the, the Nazi, what it means, national socialism, you can't deny that. He was both a socialist and a nationalist. But nevertheless, the Spanish central government is beating up old women breaking voting machines, smashing polling places, and the American media is either silent or supportive of the fascist government in Spain. Isn't that odd? Isn't that a very odd story? I I wanted to cover that. I just did. I I just covered it, you know, in a short version. I gave you a thumbnail of that one. God, faith, and reason. What can I say about God to you today? Do you understand why I'm perplexed by the whole God issue? (laughs) After a a slaughter like this, what are you going to tell me? The people who actually got shot were bad people and those who the bullets missed were good people? No, I'm sorry. You can't believe that. So what are you going to believe after a thing like this? You believe what I believe, which is that you can still understand my key word here, which is E equals MC squared. The search to find God is the finding itself, meaning you keep searching and searching and searching, and that's a form of worship. And that's good enough for me. And that's why the book has validity and why it will definitely catch a wave. Because you don't have to believe God controls every act on earth in order to understand this. I tried to explain that the other night to to a group of Jewish people at at a Yom Kippur service. Maybe two out of the 300 people there understood what I was saying. 
that the reason God remains invisible to people is, and in, in, let's say, if you're Jewish, God is invisible to you. Do you understand that? The reason God has not revealed himself directly to us is that he wants us to keep searching for him. So if you're an idol worshiper that bows down to like a statue, to you that's God. Then you have the statue. That's an idol worshiper. And Judaism came about because it was supposed to like not, fo- you're not supposed to follow the idol worshipers. So God remains invisible. And the reason for that, uh, uh, us not seeing him, is that we keep searching for him. Because once you saw him, the mystery would be gone. And you say, okay, I saw that. Now let's move on to the next act. So you have, if you have a searching mind, it's like, okay, where is he? There he is. No, oh, I saw a glimpse. Oh, there's a glimpse. There's a snapshot. Baby born snapshot. Um, a yellow jacket eating a uh, monarch butterfly. There's another snapshot. I saw that yesterday. That was very nice to watch. After the show, I went out in my backyard. There was the most beautiful butterfly being devoured by a yellow jacket or a wasp. Thing was still alive. I just wanted to sort of intervene now and rescue a butterfly. So I just watched it like in horror. And I said, well, okay, there's natural selection. So the Vegas madman, was he on medication? Why did he film himself during the slaughter? Where is the video footage of, the, of, the, of, the, of him doing this? Because you see, if, if the government has that footage, if there was footage, if the camera was running, they have an obligation to release some of it immediately to put to rest this whole thing that he was a member of ISIS. Unless, and here's the terrible part, unless the video does show him as Abu Chaim Yankel going Abu this, Abu Chaim Yichla, wearing a, 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 a scarf and going the, 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 the religious jaw, then that's, that could be why they're holding it back because they don't want anyone to know. All right, move along, nothing to see here. Go back and gamble. God, faith, and reason. These are times that trouble man's soul. What am I supposed to believe? God controls everything. The bullets that hit hit the bad people and the bullets that missed miss the good people. So that means we're just leaves in a stream. I don't believe that. As I point out in my book, that'll be out soon, uh, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He created it all. He's not omnipotent. He does not control our every breath. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. Should I start singing now like Frankie Lane? I can't. I have to take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Or... Let me get down to brass tacks on a health object here. Did you know that you can find out if your body is making enough nitric oxide simply by testing your own saliva? It really is that simple to see if it's true or false. I've been raving about Super Beats, my circulation superfood drink, because it works. You get more energy, more stamina in as little as 20 minutes. My good friends at Super Beats include their new saliva indicator strips. With every purchase, you use your own saliva to see changes in your nitric oxide level when you use Super Beats. I love that Super Beats puts their money where their mouth is, and for a limited time with your first order, Super Beats will send you an entire month's supply of saliva indicator strips, which is a $25 value for free. And with your order, you'll also get a free book plus your first can of Super Beats for free. That's another $60 value. I want you to try it for yourself. All you got to do is call 1-800-481-0504, 1-800-481-0504. You're going to get a month's supply of indicator strips free. You're going to get more energy, more stamina while supporting healthy circulation. Please call 1-800-481-0504 or go to savagelovesbeats.com. It's simple. 1-800-481-0504, 1-800-481-0504, or go to savagelovesbeats.com. Again, we're going to my affiliate in Las Vegas, KBET Radio. Al, line five, you are former security at MGM Grand, is that correct? Yeah, I recently retired from there. <clears throat> and what do you have to tell the audience today about security? Well, basically, as you heard of <clears throat> the previous guest, we weren't allowed to approach a lot of these people, nor guests and what have you, and the basics of the uh, the front uh, 
when they check in, we weren't allowed to check their bags, and I always thought that was a big red flag because of what happened. And uh, anytime you try, so let, let me ask you something. So, what if they put in a TSA type screening in the hotel lobby, which I'm calling for? Would that completely cripple the hotel? Uh, probably so, because they they don't want to offend all these big guests. And I found them literally laying on the floor upstairs in the hotel rooms in the lobby, or uh, and we couldn't touch them, or we'd be fired. And this so, in other words, this whole thing of of, of total one hundred percent freedom of what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's still going to apply after a mass slaughter. Um, I mean, people are supposed to go there and let their pants down and run in the lobby. That's fine. Fornicate in the elevator. That's terrific. Whatever you want. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, not after a mass slaughter. Something has to change in Vegas and every other city. TSA security every lobby. Yes or no? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I wish I were in a large cathedral right now, and I am in a way. We're all in a cathedral today, a cathedral of doubt, a cathedral of pain, a cathedral of confusion, and that's what we're talking about. I don't have a direct answer for you. I'm not God. I don't have an answer for you. It's that simple. Have you lost your faith in God as a result of this mass shooting in Las Vegas is what's plaguing me right now because I'm asking myself the same question. It's not like I've not faced this before. All the kids that were shot at Columbine or the little children that were shot up there in uh, Connecticut, the same questions come up over and over and over again. Or when a bus full of Christian children goes off a cliff and they all die, what do you do? You become cynical and become like one of these schmuck late-night comedians and tell jokes about it because you think you're a wise guy? How do you go on the next day and believe God exists when you see a thing like this? Or the million people who were slaughtered in Syria for nothing? Where was God when they were being tortured by ISIS and raped? Where was he? When the little girls, the Christian girls, the Yazidi girls were being raped by these animals in ISIS, where was God then when the girl was screaming out? Where were they during the Holocaust when Jews, Catholics, and others were being killed? Tell me, where was God then? You had Jews going into the gas chambers and, and, and being shot in pits with a Torah in their hand as the Nazis laughed at them. They said, where is your God now? I've heard story after story after World War II. I was a little kid. I heard it going on. I mean, I heard people lose their faith after World War II. I was a little child. I heard all the stories. I heard people put down their Bibles after the Holocaust. They didn't believe in God after that. Jews who were very religious said no more. How does a person hold on to their faith after a, t a thing like this? What, you, you were lucky you weren't in Vegas? You were supposed to go and you didn't take the flight? You're on the plane and you canceled it because a shopping uh, site came up and you were told you not to go? You, your horoscope said don't go and you didn't go, so God loves you. But he didn't love those who were killed. How do you hold on to faith at a time like this? Is there any reason to hold on to faith or you become a pure cynic? I'm thinking out loud, that's all. Now, what do I become now? I got a God book coming out, God, Faith, and Reason. What am I supposed to do now? Tell you God's will? He, he, all those people who were evil got shot there, and the good ones survived. A husband got shot, and the wife didn't get shot. A wife got shot, and the husband didn't get shot. No, I don't believe God pulled the trigger. Pure chance. A lunatic, a nut, and that's it. Nothing. No, you can't make rhyme or reason out of it. So what do you do in a world where there's no reason? There's no reason, no belief, no faith. How do you go on day to day? Well, you got to get pragmatic. And it doesn't mean you give up your faith in a, a higher power. 
See, this is the trick. How do you hold on to a faith in a higher power at a time like this? Because the normal reaction to this is to be totally cynical and lose your faith completely. But you can't let that happen. You almost have to continue to have your faith in God, and you've got to continue to have your reason in a pragmatic solution to the problem at the same time. Faith means no reason. Faith means faith. Reason means reason. But they're not incompatible. They're cousins of the same soul. You can have faith and reason, which I do. You almost have to be schizoid about it. That's the challenge, is to have faith and reason. They're cousins. No one noticed him bringing the guns in. No one wondered what was so heavy in the bag, the clunking of the ammunition on the floor. Now we find out he took a picture of a video of himself. The whole thing's crazy. How do you hold on to your faith at a time like this? Really is a topic I would like to discuss. And I don't know that this is a conspiracy. I mean, yeah, I would make sure the girlfriend is brought back for a grilling. I'd rub a hoser with the with the, with the light over her head. I, was, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean that metaphorically. It doesn't add up. The hundred grand to the Philippines, and she's innocent. Where'd that money go? That's, the whole thing's crazy. I mean, it's affecting all of us. Uh, every man and woman listening to this show right now is affected by what happened. And if you're not affected by it, there's something wrong with you. You can't just go on like nothing happened. You have to ask yourself questions about the reason for living the reason for dying, what the hell it's all about. Why do we have a Second Amendment that permits morons to get 50 machine guns? It can't, I'm sorry, the the Second Amendment can't mean that you could have unlimited machine guns and, 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 and suppressors. I'm sorry, it doesn't make sense to me. Now, I know that the minute I said that, I stepped on the third rail. The gun nuts go mashuga. They go crazy. Hey, are you crazy? Now you're a communist now. I just joined the communist brigades because I dared question the sacred cow of the Second Amendment, the slippery slope. Yes, we have a right to bear arms, but how many? I mean, how many arms are you allowed to bear at one time? 30 machine guns? You're allowed to have an arsenal now? Well, why limit it to 30 uh, semi-automatic weapons? Why not, uh, as I said, a flamethrower? Why should you not be allowed to own a flamethrower? Isn't that what the founders intended? Is that what James Madison intended? You you should have a flamethrower in case an oppressive government arose? You should have a flamethrower. And you should be able to buy a used T-34 tank. That's a semi-automatic tank. Come on. Look, you know, certain things happen in a society that change the thinking of people. So, my friends, is there a religious answer to this? How do you deal with this? I mean, I'm dealing with this with this omnipotence, um, omnipresent thing in an email exchange with someone, and we're going back and forth on it. Neither of us are accepting the other person's point of view. A lot of Christians have faith in God 100%. They don't even question it, which is beautiful. Unfortunately, I'm not that way. I don't have 100% faith in anything. I really don't. In In that regard, I'm like every other American. I'm a cynical person at the end of the day. I have only, you know what I have faith in? You know, when things go wrong in my life, you know what I have faith in survival. When it comes right down to it, that's all I truly believe in. And you could trace that back to God. Where do I get my survival instinct from? When all else is stripped away. When you're hanging on to almost nothing in your life. Nothing. There's nothing to hang on to. Your fingernails are broken. And you're falling down a a well, which has slippery sides and nothing to grab onto. What do you believe in? Oh, boy, these are... These are really weird questions, I realize, for a national talk show. I shouldn't really be engaging in them. But this is where I go. This is how I go. How do I cope? How do I deal with this? This is really a challenge, particularly for me in the media. I mean, it's so easy to play the Star Spangled Banner and and the the shooting tapes for three more days and then play like, oh, yeah, Second Amendment all the way. Anyone who opposes it. No, I, I can't do that. That's not who I am. That's not Michael Savage. That's not me. Not my soul not my essence. This is who I am. I'm a questioning man. And if a day comes that I'm no longer questioning, it means I'm brain dead. So these are times that try man's soul. And if they're not trying your soul, something's really wrong. Have we answered all the questions about the man? No. Is it possibly a conspiracy that he's involved somehow with ISIS? I think that's more or less ruled out. The beginning of the show, I didn't. But, you know, when facts emerge, 
It has to change your thinking. And a fact emerged in the last hour that he took a video of himself. Well, at least we know he set up a video camera of himself doing the shooting. If there is such a video, I am calling upon the federal government to release a snippet of that to show us definitively that he, in fact, was the shooter. And there's no Abu headscarf job with a religious uh, Allah job before it. Okay, I need that. And if I need it, you need that. If, on the other hand, there's a headscarf and an Allah job, I want to see that. It's that simple. I'm speaking in, in shorthand right now. I don't have to spell it out for you. If there's a headscarf a la job and they're hiding it, that's one thing. If there is no headscarf a la job, they have an obligation for all of the peaceful Muslims in this country and the world to release that tape as well. How do you like that? Turn it around. Why is the government holding back even a snippet of that tape of that man doing the shooting? I demand they release it. I didn't say the whole thing. A piece of it to show he's really the shooter. A piece of it to show he's not a religious nut. Why am I wrong for demanding that? You know, I have a special obligation as a talk show host. You may think that it's just an average guy talking to you. Believe me, I understand my responsibilities. I've had them for almost a quarter of a century. And thus far, I've carried the weight very, very readily and very ably, I must say. I've survived everything, every kind of event you could imagine in talk radio history. I've been through 9-11. I've been through this. I've been through that. But something is happening to me right now. I'm demanding something of the government that I've never demanded before. Who is the government? Guys and women, just men and women. That's the government. They're you and I with a badge and a gun and extraordinarily, extraordinary powers. Look what Mueller is doing in, in, the, in the abuse of power. Mueller is just an FBI agent. He's just a lawyer. And what is he doing? He's been given absolute power and he's abusing it. He is investigating everyone around Trump for crimes not related, possible crimes not even related to this collusion business. Why? Because he's power mad. He's power drunk. He's exceeding his authority. He should be fired by uh, Donald Trump for having exceeded his authority. And you know what I say? Go to hell to the media. You don't like it? Wolf Blitzer, you don't like it? It's too damn bad. When they start ruining your family, investigating every Kleenex tissue they ever bought, going back to when they were three years old in a gun machine, that's a little beyond Russia collusion. Fire them. End it. And take the heat, Mr. Trump. Believe me, most people will support you. Oh, I know that MSNBC would not support you. I know the vermin at MSNBC will make a big issue of it. I know that they'll go on and on about how you're a dictator, but they believe that anyway. So why don't you give them what they want? Become a dictator, fire Mueller. You actually have the power to fire a man who exceeds his authority. Fire Robert Mueller. He's exceeding his authority. He is acting like a criminal, not like... A, an FBI agent. He is a criminal right now, what he is doing to you and your family and everyone around you. So we're talking now about a government, the same government that, that can produce a monster like Mueller. We have those people now withholding the videotape of the shooter in Las Vegas. They have no right to withhold it. Oh, I, it's an ongoing investigation. Move along. Let us, the geniuses, figure out how to cover this up. No, no, sorry. The American people are conversing about this they're freaked out about it the nation is frightened about it and you have an obligation to set the record straight damn it and you're not doing it don't sit there like the schmucks you are known to be release that damn tape and we want to know was he doing an abu religious job or wasn't he clear the air already that's all i'm going to say Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. America is having a nervous breakdown over this mass slaughter. If the man did record himself conducting the slaughter, and if that tape exists, do you agree with me, Michael Savage, that the government has an obligation and a duty to America and the world to release that a piece of that tape immediately to dispel the notion that this was an ISIS-related event First of all, it would dispel uneasiness about Islam. If, on the other hand, there is a connection to Islam, do you, do you think we have a right to know it? 
this needs to be done right away. This can't be swept away like, you know, like like the Kennedy assassination. We can't wait 10 years for the, quote, government, which is made up only of people, to release this. Why are they holding it back? Why are they holding it back? Now, as far as the Second Amendment goes, another third rail of, uh, of radio, the Second Amendment, Dems and Republicans bend interpretations of the Second Amendment to their own needs, by the way. Has anyone said that? That's kind of splitting it right down the middle. Dems and Republicans bend an interpretation of the Second Amendment to fit their points of view. You can make it say anything. Now, I know what originalism is. Believe me, I know what it is. But you can interpret the Second Amendment to mean almost anything. So the Dems say it means one thing and the Republicans say it means another. However, I don't believe it means you have the right to have a flamethrower nor a flash suppressor or a silencer. I'm, I'm sorry, there has to be a limitation. There has to be. Well, there was already a limitation. So don't tell me I'm wrong on that one. But maybe we need, maybe we need some new limitations. Like instead of 30 machine guns, you can own 29. I mean, there's no limitation. There is already a limitation. There's no common sense left in the country. It's either or. Either you're a commie or you're, you're a free-loving American. Go wrap yourself in the flag now. Oh, God bless America. Flamethrowers, tanks. How about a ship throwing a destroyer? You're allowed to get an active destroyer, a semi-automatic destroyer. A used one from the Paraguayan Navy. Okay, here we are. Free will, omnipotence. It could drive you crazy. Is any one that people use drugs or drink some wine? They don't know why. How much can you take of all of this till you crack, till your brain snaps? All I did was ask for more security in Las Vegas hotels, and I'm getting like crazy calls already. Here's a call that makes sense. Arnie is calling out of New York City on WABC. Artie, line nine, you make a good suggestion. What is it? Yes, hi, how are you? And what, What's your suggestion? I want to hear your suggestion, because by what I read on the board, it makes... It- Okay. It goes back to the Wild West days, believe it or not. It's not a new suggestion. It's just something old, like we always repeat things. And that is, do you remember when you came into a Wild West town, what did you have to do with your guns and your your weapons? You had to check them. Uh, More or less like registering them when you came into a public place or a place where there was going to be drinking or lots of other people, uh, so that the risk was down. And if you didn't, if you didn't do it, then it would be the obligation of the business owner or the people that were representing them to take... I want to see if I follow you. You're saying that anyone going into a a hotel with gambling and drinks and whatever should register firearms? Should even have to be known that they are a registered gun owner and they have their guns with them, both. They should have to check both, just as a... Yeah, but wait a minute. But here's a man coming to do evil with 10 bags of guns. Do you think he would have said, I have 10 bags of guns? Absolutely not. But the fact that he has his name and that he signs on the dotted line that they could actually check to see if he does have guns. Now, like you said, if they're doing something illegal, you can't stop the... the, the, yeah, that's the, the problem. Th- that is the problem right there. I mean, I have a conceal and carry permit that I, that I cherish. I cherish this. I work very hard to make sure I maintain it. But it's very clear. If you're going into a drinking establishment... You cannot carry a a weapon even if you're licensed to carry one in the state of California. I I hope you know that. There are very strict laws about a conceal and carry weapon. Most cops that I know do not carry their guns off duty into bars or restaurants. I don't know if you know that uh, right now. To take their wife out to dinner, they don't have their gun with them. They don't want the responsibility of it. They'd rather break a chair over someone's head or hit them with an ashtray than go through the hell of these courts. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. This just came out minutes ago. Pictures have just been released of the Las Vegas madman, his body, his dead body. And that's not the disturbing part. It's of a note that he has left behind. There's the pen and there's the note. A pen and a note. 
Of course, the police are saying it's an ongoing investigation, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry with the ongoing investigation. Whose uh, privacy are they preserving? The man's dead. That's such crap, it's unbelievable. What do you mean ongoing investigation? Move along, there's nothing to see here. The whole world wants to know what the hell his motivation was. Which schmuck now, which schmuck in the Las Vegas Police Department or which putz in the FBI is saying you have no right to know? No, they have no right to withhold it. There's no ongoing investigation. The man's dead. You're not preserving anything except your own power. Okay, lying dead on the hotel room floor. What, do you want to preserve his image? He leaves a note on the side table. I want to know what the note says. I want to know whether there's a religious motivation or I want to put that to rest. And I think every Muslim in America has a right to know that more than do the non-Muslims. How's that? Because right now there's a lot of suspicion that he was a religious nut, he was converted, blah, blah, blah. She had a connection with the Abu thing in the Philippines. There it is. Now they got a gun next to him and the head with the blood shot himself. Other pictures show a bipod mounted rifle at his feet. No, none of the maids saw that on the way in. Revolver lying above him, stained with blood. His body surrounded by brass shell casings. That answers the question. Now look at the faces of all those he killed so far. Look at these people, ordinary people. White, Asian, brown, black. There they are, slaughtered by this madman. He obtained the guns legally, modified himself for a faster rate of fire. But, but you need a special trigger trick to, to shoot faster in case the government comes to get you. You need a suppressor too, absolutely, and a flamethrower. What's the motive? Now we hear about debts, I don't believe it. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. FBI, ISIS claims responsibility, huge gambling bills. I don't care about gambling bills. Gamblers don't go and do things like this. This is stupid to believe that has anything to do with gambling bills, that he slaughters innocent people. Crap, nonsense. Something wrong. And what's the note there? Now we're going to hear, oh, it's fake news. The, the police wrote the note. The FBI wrote the note to throw us off the track. They, they took away the prayer rug. And, and, the, and the Bible. They, they took away the prayer rug and the religious book. Now you're going to start hearing that next. Okay, Mike, you're buying it hook, line, and sink a note. He didn't write the note. The FBI planted the note. This will go on now for 30 years. It's like, you know, who killed Kennedy? Here we go again. We're going to get, need this Zagruder tape. But we have the Zagruder tape. He filmed himself while doing it. I want to, I want to see the, the Zagruder tape of this. Can we see the paddock tape, please? Piece of it? Why are they hiding this, the, the paddock tape? Let's call it the paddock tape from now on. We know, we've gone from the Zagruda tape, the paddock tape. Savage says release a piece of the, of, the, of the paddock tape now. What's wrong with that? KSFO, Donna, should the paddock tape be released immediately in part, yes or no? Yes, absolutely. If nothing else, it'll help us sort out in our heads all these ridiculous questions we're asking ourselves. And I'm even at the point where I'm questioning, was he radicalized by some group on the left that may have inspired him that's anti-American? At least we'd have some kind of questions answered. Is everybody that does this a lone wolf, as in the Scalise case with James Hopkinson? Okay, you make a good point, right. We're reading all sorts of conspiracies, Antifa connection, ISIS connection, gambling connection. Well, I think releasing a portion of the tape, especially the opening minute of it, where he either says something or doesn't say something, would put aside some of these conspiracy theories. Charles on KSFO, fire away. What's on your mind? Uh, my belief is that the Bolsheviks, as you call them, want this to scenario to be angry white man and they don't want anything to interfere with that 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 story that they're well, gonna... what if it is just an angry white man we should know that as well you're correct about that but they the the reason that they do this is because they have an agenda that goes beyond this guy's psychosis yeah, yeah but this is from my point of view this is not the time to start blaming the left, I don't want to hear that on my show because they, they didn't do this. He did it. This, this, this man did it. I don't want to hear about the TV comedians did it or, or Hillary Clinton did it. See, this is the bad thing for us to start blaming each other for this. Then we're just as screwed up as they are. 
I think what we got to do is demand that the government be more responsible to the American people who are in shock right now. We are the American people. Those of you who are listening to the show, we are the American people as well as all of the others. And we are demanding one very simple thing, and I think it's a rational demand. They should release the self-made tape of the shooter's uh, video that he made while he was conducting this atrocity. And at least the first few seconds would put aside a lot of the a lot of the conspiracy theories, wouldn't it? Yes, and I agree with you on that. All right. Well, thank you for the call. I, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm I have an obligation. It's not just to sit up here and jab and, you know, exercise my jawbone and, and the muscles. I, I have an obligation that I try to live up to every day on this radio show. It's a very big obligation. Sometimes it's to be funny, to, to lighten the load of myself and others. Sometimes it's to be very serious. This is a very serious incident in American history. It's not to be swept under the rug and move along kind of thing. This is, this is a 9-11 of our time. Not on the level of the number of people slaughtered, although it's pretty high to begin with, on the level of the psychological wreckage it has imposed upon the American people, this is like a 9-11 all over again. And I wouldn't even say on a mini scale. It's a pretty powerful 9-11 jolt. And we need to have some questions answered. We need to have some peace of mind. And a long way towards peace of mind would come from the FBI releasing the first 20 seconds of that tape of this, 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 this creature, Paddock, and hear what he has to say. We, we want to hear it for a number of reasons. We need to dispel the notion that he's connected to any larger group, if that is true. Or if he is connected to a larger group, we need to know that immediately. We must know that immediately. There's no right for the government to withhold that from the American people. They're not above the law. And in fact, if they're withholding it, they're doing great damage to the, sanct the safety and the sanity of the American people. If there is a connection to ISIS, we need to know that for our own reasons. If there is no connection to ISIS, we must know that immediately. If there is a connection to Antifa, which I seriously doubt, we need to know that. If there is no connection to a domestic terrorist group, we need to know that. Why am I wrong in, in asking for this? I have a responsibility to the audience. I am a widely quoted talk show host. I'm a widely quoted author. Forget that you don't see me on Fox News or MSNBC. They're small players in the overall scheme of things. Trust me on that. They think that they're more powerful than they are. You just trust me on that. They're not leaders of thought. They're leaders of disinformation. Both of those outlets are leaders of disinformation as far as I am concerned. How else would you explain that Fox News has boycotted a man who's had four best-selling books in a row? Four, not one. How would you figure out that they're not dissemblers of information and disseminators of misinformation if they would not have a man on whose book Trump swore outsold the president's book itself? How is that possible? Why is it that Moloch will not permit me on his channel? Why? Who is it there who is blocking me? Do you think I need to sell another 3,000 books so badly? You, let's assume I appeared on Fox News. I sold 3,000 more books, which is, never would happen. Pick the biggest show on Fox News. And I'm on there for three minutes talking about any of my books. I would sell 300 to 500 more books. Big deal. So it's the information they don't want disseminated. Isn't that correct? It's not going to change my lifestyle. I, I exist without Fox News, without MSNBC. I don't need Pill Griffin. They don't need me. I don't need them. We have our own worlds. Why is it that I'm not heard from? Because the propaganda ministry does not want you to hear me outside of the show where they can dismiss me. Ah, he doesn't even exist. This is what was done in the Soviet Union. The Soviets had a very special way of damaging their thinkers like Solzhenitsyn. They made believe they didn't exist. In other words, they ignored them. By ignoring them, they destroyed them. So they thought. But little did they know, they just made them more powerful. So putting aside all of the self-aggrandizement uh, uh, for a moment, I want to go back to the issue at hand. We learned in this hour, in the last 30 minutes, that there is a, a suicide note on the table next to him. We're demanding that it be released immediately. They're, who are they protecting other than their own? They're just covering their own back. It's just the police agencies are covering their own back, trying to come up with a cover story. So that, that doesn't make them look very good. I want, you know, a little, what is the word they use now? Some stupid word, transparency. That's the current word. That's like gravitas of its time. 
I would like to see what's on the suicide note. It is my business. It's your business. It's not the chief cop there in the FBI's business alone. Who is he? America is in shock right now, sir, whoever you may be, and all powerful though you may be. You have an obligation to the American people to release that suicide note at once. And by the way, while you're at it, sir, whoever it is who's holding on to it, or madam, whoever you may be, you have an obligation to release a portion of that self-made tape of the shooter. America needs some answers, and you have the power to either give them or hold them back. And if you're holding them back, why are you holding them back? Why? Why are you holding them back? John on KKOH in Reno, line six. I want to make sure I hit the right button. My eyes are a little blurry after almost three hours on the radio with uh, this tension that I'm on. John on line six, go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage, this is Dr. John in Lake Tahoe. I'm a physician up here. How are you doing? What's on your mind tonight? Okay, well, I wanted to, it hit me like a ton, a ton of bricks a few moments ago. ISIS has been saying or bragging that they want to recruit or they want somebody to hit Las Vegas. I think that's obvious to any informed. Yeah, and they're also recruiting in the Philippines, which connects to the girlfriend. That is correct. That's why I'm saying we need to either confirm, we need to advance those conspiracy theories or put an X through them. And the, 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 the fastest way to do that, doctor, would be to release a piece of the self-made tape and the suicide note, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm with you with all that. But just, just hang on for a second. If you walk into a gun dealer in Nevada and you are, look like a typical Muslim terrorist, they're not going to sell it to you. They're going to call the FBI. If you walk in and you're a middle-aged white guy like me, they're going to be fine with it. So obviously I, they're going to be recruiting somebody that looked like this Mr. Paddock for their... I understand. That is a theory that still has legs. So what is the quickest way to dispel this connection to Islam other than releasing a suicide note and releasing the videotape of it, that he made during the shooting? Wouldn't that make sense? And it makes sense only in the sense that they may be trying to find other people that are involved in, in this group. And so they're trying to run them down, and they don't want them to know how much stuff they know. That, that, that's just a typical police tactic. So it could be that they are, they are trying to keep these people comfortable. And so, you know, it's like uh, any time that people, police investigate you, they always say, oh, we just, you know, we know you're No, not no, I hear what you're saying, and in an ordinary case, that would make sense. Right. This is a 9-11 level uh, national psychological emergency. Right. And a lot of people are frightened to death right now. And they're not, they're not knowing which way to turn. They're saying, was he a member of a group? Was he a member of ISIS? Was he brainwashed by the girlfriend? Is there a connection to Islam? They need to know an answer to that. And the biggest recipients of this information should be the Muslim community. They should be demanding an answer, by the way. I wonder why they're not so vocal demanding an answer right away. Do you have an answer to that one? So, you know, so. Wait a minute. Why, why aren't the, the Muslim big mouths... Like care, why aren't the big mouths in care demanding a release of the tape and a release of the uh, of a suicide note right uh, now? Why am I demanding it? Maybe it has. Well, well, for one, for one, I have no, I have no axe to grind in this thing. I don't know what he's connected to, or it was just a plain white guy nut. But I think the American people would feel a little better if they had some sense of knowledge of this. Well, would you raise an interesting point? Okay, they're keeping it under wraps because they're tracing down all leads, and so that means what? So we have to include that there are other people involved, right? I wrote a note for you. The girlfriend is the key. No, by not releasing the tape, by not releasing the suicide note, mm -hmm. what the FBI is saying is that there are other people involved. Yeah. So where we have an answer. No, we have a partial answer. Correct. And They've just given us a partial answer. The FBI <laughs> has said there are other people involved. We can safely conclude that, right? Before they, before they go public with this, if it is ISIS... They want to have all their ducks in a row because you can imagine the backlash from CNN and the, the you know the, the extreme liberal media. They're going to be screaming and yelling, so they want to have. You know what I say? Let them all go to hell. That's what I say to Wolf Blitzer and to all of those fools. They can go, you know where? All of them. They don't run this country. They're just a bunch of psychopaths. All of them. I don't want my country run by a bunch of psychopaths in the news media. How do you like that? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com.
listen to me. You know, during the break, I go on my website. I don't post during. I Karen does it, so I'm on michaelsavage.com, and I see stories I sent. Vegas madman filmed himself during slaughter. Savage audio, more questions and answers. God, faith, and reason available, blah, blah, blah. I go underneath that. There's another story posted that I didn't see. Vegas shooter may have been targeting another music festival. I said, what? A week before, he tried to book a room over a rap festival, but the rooms were sold out. Did you know that? I didn't. Photos emerge of Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock's body, and there's a suicide note. Wait, it gets even crazier. Vegas shooter had 200 plus reports of suspicious activities, large financial transactions in casinos. These are all linked up on my website. My head is spinning. This is a far bigger story than meets the eye. And this is going to go on and on and on. And until the tape is released, until the tape is released of uh, the one he allegedly shot of himself shooting the people up, until that is released, all bets are off as to who he was, why he did it. But there's another giveaway. Vegas Shooter may have been targeting another music festival. He tried to do a rapper festival a week before. He was overlooking another festival, but he couldn't get a room. He was locked out onto the Life is Beautiful festival, headlined by Chance the Rapper and Lord and held in Sin City September 22nd to 24th. To me, that tells me an awful lot. Thank you for listening and keep thinking. Keep that mind open. Savage.